Andy, thank you. Indeed, a wide open field chasing the world's fastest man in 2019. There's DeGrasse warming up. It's Christian Coleman, the man to beat with the best this year of 981, the first world championship since the retirement of the great Usain Bolt. And remember just two years ago, Michael, in that final in London, it was Coleman who led that race for 90 meters before being caught by Justin Gatlin in that outside lane. Well, these two men, a great rematch between these strong Americans. Here we get a good glance of both of these sprinters. Coleman stands about five foot ten inches tall. Gatlin a little bit taller than him. And the great Jamaican as well. It's Johan Blake. He's drawn lane number eight. You want to be in the mix in lane four, five, and six. That's where Coleman, Sabine, and Andre de Grasse are sitting. It looks like the officials want these men to reset. But good sprint conditions warm here at the stadium this evening. So we have the old guard Gatlin and Blake and the new guard led by that man Coleman in this men's final DeGrasse as you saw in that feature a couple of years ruined by hamstring injuries after two great seasons at the World Championships and Rio at the Olympics in 2016 where he won three Olympic medals. There's Aaron Brown. He'll be outside in lane number nine. DeGrasse has rounded back into that form. We saw him in very close to that form in Rio in 2016. Khalifa International Stadium in this part of the Middle East where, Michael, the midday temperatures reach 40 degrees Celsius, the humidity at 80 percent. And so as we get set for this epic Blue Ribbon event, the men's 100 meters final, we can tell you that these athletes will not be competing under those conditions because this stadium, Khalifa International, is air conditioned. With the temperature a comfortable 25 degrees, humidity though still up around 75, 80%. But great conditions for these athletes to test themselves with their nerves on a hair trigger. It's the 2019 IAAF World Track and Field Championships from Doha in Qatar. And the men's 100 meter final is next with two Canadians in the field, Andre de Grasse and Aaron Brown. But they'll have their hands full because one man has been in a state of the art by himself, Christian Coleman, the 23 year old American on fire this year with the 988 clocking Michael in that semifinal 981 best this year we haven't seen him since late July that's because he was under the threat of a suspension for missing three doping tests in a 12 month period and faced a two year suspension but was cleared by the US anti doping agency on a technicality so he was good to go and he showed up here in absolutely fine form. And this track, this new Mondo track here at Khalifa is rock hard and super fast as we set the lanes. In lane number two, Filippo Tortu from Italy. He beat Mike Rogers in the semifinals by a hundredth of a second to scramble into this men's 100 meter final. In lane number three, it'll be Justin Gatlin, but they go outside to Aaron Brown in lane number nine. What a season he's been having, Michael. Three times he's been the Canadian champion at 100 and 200 meters. Now to lane number three, and Justin Gatlin of the United States. He's 37 years old, the defending champion, winning gold in London in 2011, or rather 2017, 12 years after his first title in 2005. Gatlin in three. Outside in lane number eight, the second fastest man all time with a best of 969. There he is, Johan Blake of Jamaica. But Blake in the sunset of his career. In lane number four is the man to be from the United States, Christian Coleman. Fastest man in the world in this race for the last three years with a best this year of 981. Lane 7 representing Great Britain, the European champion, with four sub 10 second performances this season. Zarnell Hughes. In lane 5, 
in lane number five, representing South Africa. This is the speedster Akane Simbini, the Commonwealth Games champion. Simbini with a best this year of 9-9-3. He will be a factor. In lane number six, Andre de Grasse, the triple Olympic medalist from Rio. Coming back from those hardship years with hamstring injuries, he's rounding back to top form. So those are the men that will contest this first World Championships in the post-Usain Bolt era. Well, that is a very unique introduction, yes, Mark. It's a rock star, rock concert atmosphere. So it gives a, an extra challenge to these men to, to keep their focus. Now we're back to normality. Look at the focus, the concentration that all these men have. This is the most important race of the year. We're running into late September, early October for these world championships. So very unique time. Usually it's in the middle of the summer. So they have to keep their focus, not only tonight, but through the entire length of this very long season. But it comes down to this. Coleman, by far, is the preeminent favorite. The rest of these men will be chasing him. Christian Coleman, the fastest man in the world for the United States this year in lane four. Two Canadians, Andre de Grasse in six, Aaron Brown in nine. Two veterans, the old guard, Justin Gatlin of the U.S., the defending champion in three, and Johan Blake of Jamaica, the great training partner of Usain Bolt's in eight. The final of the men's 100 meters at the World Championships in Doha. So. They're away, Coleman blasts out of the blocks, Gatlin staying with him on his left-hand side, DeGrasse is in a big hole, it's Coleman running away, Gatlin grimacing, and DeGrasse may have got to the podium. Nine, seven, six into a headwind of 0.6 meters per second. Check that a slight following wind. 976, the fastest time of the world in 2019. And Coleman wins the world championship. It's Gatlin second and DeGrasse did get there for third. Sambini is fourth. Blake down in fifth as Coleman savors the moment. He succeeds. His American teammate, Justin Gatlin, as the world champion in 2019. Well, this final does not disappoint five men under that magical 10-second barrier, but Christian Coleman improves his own personal best of 979 to 976, putting him at number six all time. A great run, and what a strong finish by the Canadian Andre de Grasse. He was left in the blocks ever so slightly, but a good example of speed endurance over those last 30 meters, which sets up well for the 200. But tonight, as we somewhat expected, Christian Coleman comes through after that tremendous first round effort, the semifinal. He looks so strong, and a 976, a personal best. He congratulates the Canadian on his bronze, Andre de Grasse, but Christian Coleman, by far, the standout this evening. Coleman, the gun went off and the race was over. He has a great start. Here he is, right next to Gatlin, was ahead of Gatlin at 30 meters and began to pull away. And look at de Grasse going past Simbine to get there for the bronze medal. Again, speed endurance. Look at Andre. Keep his head down. He's about a half a meter, almost a meter behind Simbini at this point. But Coleman pulls away. Gatlin grimacing. Look at the tension in his face and neck. This is a high intensity moment, but a strong, strong finish by Andre de Grasse as well. I quickly counted Coleman's strides at about 43. The great Usain Bolt takes about 41 strides. He stands six foot five. But the five foot ten Coleman blasts through. Great speed endurance, strong running by Andre de Grasse, a nice dip at the line to maintain that bronze medal position.
DeGrasse has been working on his starts all year. He felt that was the one thing he needed to shore up. He got out of the blocks in behind Sambini, but then ran him down with that great speed endurance. Coleman pumping his arms at 9.76, a changing of the guard witnessed here today in Doha as he replaces Justin Gatlin and moves on in this post-Usain Bolt era, shouting to the heavens here in the Middle East. He would get a great head-on shot of his dry phase. Look at his eyes. They stay down on the track for the first 30 meters. Then he lifts his head, keeps his arms moving, and then it's celebration. Christian Coleman, number six all time, 9.76 seconds. The great American of the age of 23, one year to the Olympics, takes his claim as the world's fastest man on this planet. With a 9.76 clocking, he was in a class by himself in what was a decorated field of sprinters here in Doha. But Andre de Grasse, a great Canadian story, Michael, coming back after two lost years with those hamstring injuries. There he is. Look at his reaction time. 1.140, so that's uh, 14 one-hundredths of a second out of the blocks. A much improved, uh, actually, from his earlier starts in the rounds. But look how quickly Coleman put daylight between himself, Gatlin, and the rest of this field. Well, these are great angles and camera perspectives that we're getting from this competition to really see the acceleration through that first 30 meters. Then everyone stays about the same, relatively speaking. Coleman just so powerful through those first 30 meters. That's where he won this race. Aaron Brown finishing in eighth place. Uh, he's had a great year, again, uh, winning the 100 and 200 meters of the Canadian Championships. He started this season ahead of Andre de Grasse. He was a better sprinter, but de Grasse progressed throughout this year, peaking at just the right time here at the World Championships. So a hush falls over this uh, crowd here at Khalifa International Stadium. The American draped in his flag, Christian Coleman, the man, the fastest man in the world. 9.76 seconds, a brand new PB, and Gatlin, the two-time world champion, turns over his crown. It's amazing that he finished second year. But three weeks ago, Michael, he pulled up in Zagreb, holding his left hamstring, fading from the lead to fourth place in that race in 10.29 seconds, and many people thought he wouldn't be here. He just seems to come through when it counts. But as you mentioned, Mark, this truly is a changing of the guard with a 23-year-old coming in with the number six all-time performance a year ahead of the Olympic Games. Christian Coleman will be the preeminent favorite going into the games as well. A great shot here for this young man to really absorb this world championship victory. You know, he lost only once this season. That's how good he was. And that was to his compatriot, Noah Lyles, who decided not to run in the 100 meters here in Doha, but will compete only in the 200, where he is the heavy favorite. The difference in that race was six one thousandths of a second in Shanghai. That's what separated the two. And there is the Canadian, DeGrasse, with his daughter celebrating. He's back on the podium, back where he left off in Rio, coming back through those two ruined years. Again, this first 30 meters is what made all the difference for Christian Coleman. He didn't pull away from the rest of the field from that point on. Everyone stayed relatively even. Second, third, and fourth plays very, very tight. But I'm very impressed with Andre de Grasse. He keeps focused here. He doesn't distort his technique at all. He just keeps driving forward, which allows him to overtake Simbine and get on the podium. But once again, Christian Coleman, champion of the world. Coleman clocked a 9.76 here today. He had a 9.79 in 2018, which was a year in which he was plagued with a lot of injuries. But bounced back, and he is the toast of the sprint world. And the man to beat going to the Tokyo 2020 Olympics in one year, with Rondi de Grasse making a statement here today that he's coming back to form and will have to be accounted for as well. It's Coleman ahead of Gatlin and de Grasse for Canada the medalist in the men's 100-meter final in Doha as we send it back to Andy Petrillo. In the men's 
100 meter final, Christian Coleman claims his first world title. 37 year old Justin Gatlin still holding his own with silver. And the Canadian Andre de Grasse back on the world podium, equaling the bronze he captured in 2015. Here he is with Scott Russell. Andre, it was so nice to see you take 15 month year old uh, Yuri on a little tour of the track here yeah. in Doha. You know, put it all together, how much does that kind of a performance mean to you? Uh, I feel good. I mean, I looked at the scoreboard and I'm like, okay, I, I got a personal best out of it. Um, so I was pretty grateful and I'm pretty satisfied, I guess, because, you know, just coming off of, you know, injuries and, you know, being out the sport for the last couple of years, uh, I, just, I, just, I just put it into one word, I'm just grateful for it all. So, I mean, I know that, you know, moving forward, I know I, I can get better. Um, I'm getting back into it and I think, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to running the 200 and see what I could do there. You know, you have looked during your time here comfortable to all of us. And I know there's been a coaching change and Rainer Riders involved now, but has that been a comfort to you and sort of balanced you out? Yeah, I mean, um, I knew I had to make, make a little bit of a change um, and I was okay with it. I mean, you know, obviously in you know, the first part of the season, you don't know um, how, to, it's how to manage it. You don't know if, if you're actually doing the right things, but you kind of just got to continue to trust the process and trust the coach and, and be patient. Um, and, I, and, it's, and of course, for me, like during that first part of the season, there was more, it was more downs than ups for me. But as the season progressed, I just kept getting better and better. And I was grateful to be able to say, OK, now I'm running 9-9 and sub-20 coming into the championship. So that was an awesome feeling for me to say that, OK, I got a legitimate shot.